Hello and welcome to Two Wheel Lifestyle where I am on my bicycle tour of Northern California. This is day two, starting from Burlington Campground in Humboldt Redwood State Park and continuing down to Richardson Grove State Park, spending most of the day in a beautiful redwood setting like this. My video is going to focus on the events of the day, but I'll throw in some additional footage of me riding through the redwood at the end. Also, in the name of transparency, the video has been sped up here. I'm not riding my bicycle quite this fast. It's about 50% sped up. I found it's just a lot more interesting to view when it's going just a little faster. There are side trips you can make into different groves of redwoods uh, that cut off of the Avenue of the Giants. That's the name of the main road through the area. And when you do that, you can be even more immersed along a narrower road and have an even more up-close, intimate experience with this environment. Back out on the main avenue of the Giants, you can see how narrow the road can get sometimes. Not only is there no shoulder, uh, but trees have completely overgrown the shoulder and uh, extend slightly into the road a little bit, and all you get is like a little reflector. Fortunately, it's a tourist area, and people back here are not in a hurry to go anywhere much. Uh, and uh, they give you a lot of room uh, for passing um, as you're exploring the area. Here I'm going down to Williams Grove. This gives me access to the Eel River, uh, which I've been wanting to get down to for a while. <laughs> Here I am dealing with a common situation with a car. I can't tell what he's going to do. He doesn't see me. I try my best to pass him and anticipate what he's going to do, and he goes while I'm in the middle of trying to pass him, and probably never saw me there. Um, this used to upset me, but it doesn't anymore. Cars just don't see you. Uh, you have to ride as a cyclist in anticipation of this, and I did. No matter what the driver did, they were not going to endanger me, and there was always plenty of room to deal with that situation. So that's just what it's like riding a bicycle in an area that is mostly cars. So here I am making my way down to the uh, riverfront. Now the river has wide, silty, sandy, gravelly banks, uh, and there's no way I'm going to ride my bike down there. Let's see how far I can get. Not very far before I sink into the gravel. So. Um, I set my bike off to the side and work my way down to the riverfront and the river has looked impossibly beautiful. I can't think of any other way to say it while I've been riding and looking at it from a distance but it turns out it holds up to that same appearance when you get close to it. It is crystal clear water. Now in fact it's even uh, got this blue and green uh, uh, color to it that is a result of reflecting the trees and the sky above. I stick my toes in the water and the water is warmer than air temperature so it's just uh, a, a, a great environment to go experience. And I gathered up my bike and headed back to the main road once again. Our next stop is Myers Flat where we're going to stop for a couple of things. Number one is the Shrine drive through Tree. Right, and well, here I am checking in and uh, paying away my way in. It's three bucks for a bike. Uh, it's a privately owned uh, drive through tree, unlike uh, I think the big one is the state park tree, but still, uh, still a fun little experience to have. Um, now, I'm not going to have any difficulty getting through this thing with my bicycle, of course. Uh, cars drive through this all the time. Uh, so it's kind of fun to have all the extra uh, maneuverability of a bike here. And this is an, uh, kind of an interesting tree. It's really, uh, I don't know what you call it, I don't think it's alive. I think it's a husk of a burned out dead tree. It's hollow. Um, and you can just see all the way up to the top like that. So I finished riding through here and having a good look at this and then worked my way into town. This is the Four Mori Market which I'm going to point out because they were so helpful as I went through town. I got a sandwich there and they hooked me up with some ice even though they didn't sell ice in small quantities like I wanted as a cyclist and gave me uh, a good suggestion as where to stop on the side of the road uh, to eat, which I wanted to do. Now, farther down the road, this is Benbow Road. This is an example of where I'm not on the Pacific Coast route. So you may encounter a little bit of gravel road, um, which I had no difficulty with on my bike, but I know not all uh, bike tourists are excited about being uh, on a gravel road.
here's a really good case of where the main highway is up above and down here on this older bridge that probably used to be the highway and by being down here we get a nice view of the river and the highway and uh, just a nice scenic view of the, of the woods and the hills off into the distance. Yeah, finally, in my last stop before getting into the campground was this very touristy, corny uh, roadside stop called Legend of Bigfoot. There's a lot of Bigfoot references in the Redwood area. And the Willow Creek, which is not on our route, is where they filmed the uh, what's called the Patterson video of Bigfoot. Um, and if you've ever seen an actual video of Big, Bigfoot walking through the woods, that's what it was all about. And so a lot of things around here... Uh, have a little fun with Bigfoot. This is actually a shop with a lot of hand carved wood products and uh, it's kind of interesting. That pretty much wraps up my ride and all my stuff for the day. My videos are all linked to and included in my blogs where you can get more information about the ride so I'll put a link to that down below. And this is the uh, footage I talked about I was going to put at the end of the ride that just lets you experience an extended uh, section of my ride going through the Redwoods. So enjoy, and until next time, I will see you all out there on two wheels.